Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Matthias Winkelmann and I'm very happy to be your host today. Welcome to the Entagma Unreal Engine 4 Quick Start for Complete Beginners. And this is what we are going to create today. A collage of random objects utilizing ray traced lighting, Quixel Mega Scans assets, basic shading and a few gimmicks such as the foliage tool and the decalector. Please be aware that we're going to use ray tracing features in this tutorial, which means in order for you to follow along you need to have a RTX capable graphics card and the latest version of DirectX installed. Let's get started. In order to get started, download the Epic Games Launcher and under Unreal Engine Library you can add the engine version that you want to work with. For the sake of this tutorial we are going to work with Unreal Engine 4.25, which is the latest version at the time of this recording. Once you fired up the engine, you will see this dialog that gives you a lot of categories to choose from on how you want to start your project. For example, if you want to build a first-person shooter game, there is a first-person shooter template. If you want to build a racing game, there is a vehicle template, and so on. We want to start with a completely clean, empty project with no code, which is the Plank template under Games. In Project Settings, make sure you have Blueprint selected, unless you know what you're doing. Uh, maximum quality desktop console and I do not want any starter content as I want to make everything from scratch. Make sure to enable ray tracing as this will enable all the ray tracing features that we are using in this tutorial and if you don't enable this things will look quite a bit different. Choose a folder of your liking and give it a really important name and press create project. As this tutorial is meant to be a quick start for complete beginners in Unreal Engine, I just want to briefly talk about what we are looking at here right now. On the left side you will find the Place Actors tab, and those actors have nothing to do with the people on the cinema screen. In Unreal Engine, actors describe anything that can be placed within the level. So you'll find basic objects like a cube, sphere, cylinder and so on. You will find lights in here, camera actors and also slightly more advanced features like volumes or reflection captures and so on. Below the Place Actors tab you will find the Content Browser and this is basically your own custom library. Anything that you will import into Unreal Engine will pop up here and anything that you will create will also land inside this Content Browser. On the right side you will find the world settings and the details panel. The details panel is closely connected to the world outliner, so whatever we click on here will expose its settings down below. Last but not least, in the center of the application you see the viewport and this is where all the magic happens. For the design sensitive people amongst you, I thought it might be a good idea to quickly mention that you can customize parts of the Unreal Engine UI. For example, in the content browser under view options, you can control the look of your library and under edit, editor preferences, you will find a tab which is called appearance that also gives you more options. I usually tend to use a small toolbar icon, so I turn on this and I usually also change the size of my billboards, which are all the icons in the viewport to maybe something like 0.7. The viewport in Unreal Engine is quite similar to other 3D applications. For example, you can change your view mode by pressing on perspective and choose any orthographic angle that you want to see. You can also quickly switch between those by using Alt, G, H, J and K. Or you can use this quirky feature where you press Ctrl and your middle mouse button and pull your mouse into the direction that you want to see. Also, if you click on those little cubes in the top right corner, you will be able to split your viewport into four separate windows that can hold different angles each. The triangle in the top left corner offers additional options regarding the viewport, such as changing the field of view of your editor camera, turning on game view, which turns off all the icons within the viewport, or going full on immersive if you feel like it. Right beside the perspective button, you can change the view mode that you want to see. Currently we are in lit, which means Unreal renders the scene with normal lighting. You can change this to unlit or just show the wireframes, or on top of that there are tons of different view modes that will help you to debug your scene from a more technical point of view. By clicking on the show button you will have access to additional options for customizing what you want to see in your viewport, such as turning on and off the grid. In the top right corner you will have access to all the buttons you will need to control your gizmo, such as changing between translation, rotation and scale, using local and world space, different kinds of snappings such as surface snapping or grid snapping which are these three buttons here, as well as changing the navigation speed of your currently selected camera. 
One of the best features inside Unreal Engine when getting started are the tooltips. I can't highlight them enough. They're really thought through and well curated. So whenever you have a button that you don't understand what it does, just hover over it and read the tooltip as it might help you along the way. If the little information you see here now is not enough, you can press Ctrl and Alt to get additional information in this pop-up window. And this will usually also hold a link directly to the Unreal Engine documentation that will give you additional details.